Welcome to Modern Gun Dog Training. Throughout this series of programs, we're going to be exploring the training that goes into these little people, the Labrador Retriever. They are determined, they're loyal, they're very hardworking, and with the right training, they make fantastic friends and assets to us in the shooting field, as well as great family companions. We're going to start off with little people like this one, work right through the stages and ages, and end up with adults like her father, who will be shooting over in various different situations on the battlefield or the shooting field. We're going to be visiting various shooting estates across Scotland, but we'll also do lots of our training on public access ground, which serves to prove that anybody with the time and inclination can find somewhere suitable to train their dog. I'm Joe Hipwell from Sealping Gun Dogs at Riddle Estate in the Scottish Borders. I've trained dogs for a long time now, full time, and I learnt how to do this from my grandpa, Edward Martin. We compete with our dogs and we demonstrate them across the UK, but what I get the most enjoyment from and I find the most satisfying is helping people to get the best out of their dog. And I hope that together, through this series of programmes, we'll be able to achieve that. OK, we're going to set up some memory retrieves. Now, a memory retrieve is really useful in training. I like to do lots and lots of these, far more memories than blind retrieves, because memory retrieves they're the way to teach your dog to do blind retrieves because they've got the confidence and if you get good at them they're going to succeed if they're going back to the same spot but the routine for sending them back for a memory retrieve when you take them away from something turn them round and line them up and point them back that's just the same lining and pointing as a blind retrieve but you get difficulties with blind retrieves because they're not sure something's there and if a young dog lacks confidence and things they can hesitate running out not go as far as you like so if you establish the idea with them through memory retrieves that when you line and point them like that there's something at the end if they keep going and the best way to do that is put one of these out somewhere start with it easy put one out somewhere walk the dog away at heel first only go you know, 30 yards on, on open grass turn around line them up and point them back if they succeed make it a bit more difficult take them further away further away but always send them back to the same place to start with when they're getting so that they succeed at that every time pop the dummy down before you get the dog out the car, walk them away, then turn around and point them at it. So then it is a blind retrieve of sorts, but it's a blind retrieve back to the same area where they've picked lots of memory ones. That's what we're preparing for because when you're out shooting, you may get the odd memory retrieve where something's shot and you can't pick it right now if you're during the drive and that sort of thing. So it's useful to build up their memory from that point of view, but actually they're always going to remember that if they've got anything about them. What we're really preparing for is the setup. The foot down, the hand like that, and sending them back for those memory retrieves gets them ready to do that for blind retrieves as well. We're here at the park with Chris. We've come down here to do a bit of retrieving with him. The reason I've come down to the park is because it's somewhere a little bit different for him. And it just goes to show that if you've got access to great grouse moors and pheasant shoots and training ground, that's all well and good, but you can do a lot of your basic training just in a public place that will be local to everybody, like this. Somewhere with a bit of short grass where the dogs can see the dummies. Not too many people around, but it's just a, you know, a public place like this. And it's just somewhere different to pique their interest. Now what we're going to do with him, we're going to do some memories with distractions. There's a little spot there of nice short grass where I'm going to throw two or three memory retrieves. I'm going to walk him away and send them back to them from different places around here. Each time we send him back, we're going to throw a distraction get him to leave that, and then send him for the original memory. Boy, sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Come here, Chris. Chris, sit up. OK. Sit up, sit up. See, this is why I like coming uh, to somewhere different, because at home, He's about perfect on healing away from memories. He just sticks at, Chris, sit up, come here, Chris, Chris, sit up. Sits by my side nicely, but just somewhere different. He's like, oh, this is interesting. Come here, Chris, sit up, sit up. So you're just misbehaving a little bit, and you don't, Chris, sit up. If you stay, sit up, sit up now. If you stay in your comfort zone and just do everything where they're going to do it perfectly, you never move on, and you're just kidding yourself a little bit. You have to jump. Jump in at the deep end of the swimming pool, take them different places, sit up, Chris, Chris, 
sit up, where they need little corrections like that. Because at home, you get to a stage where they get used to being trained in a certain environment. Good boy. Good boy. And they don't try things on. Whereas you come somewhere different, and they're just testing to see if the same rules apply. So you just need to be a little bit firmer and just show them that, yes, Chris, the same rules do apply. So we've got a few memory retrieves out down there. We're going to give him a distraction this way. Sit up. With a little clap of the hands to represent a gunshot. So he's seen that one, he keeps looking at that one, look, that's fresh in his mind. But we're going to make a nice clear point towards the other ones. First with my foot like that, then with my hand. But, but not letting him go too soon, just going through this process. And when he's nice and calm, good boy, see, he's, he's on the edge. So just wait till he relaxes. Good boy, sit up, sit up. Crisp. Good boy, good boy. Crisp, come here, Chris. Chris, come here. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. So you did that fine. Okay, we've got Dexter. We've come down to the river to do a bit of retrieving. I want to try and utilize, it's a nice little uh, bank the other side there. I want to do some retrieving out of there but with a distraction. So we put something out here, which is easy peasy on the grass, ask him to ignore that and pick something more difficult over the bank. Now when you're doing this, the focus of your retrieving, which in this case is this one, it's often better to throw that one first. And then put your distraction out, simply so that the distraction is the one that's at the top of his mind. Just easy peasy down there. And to get him to go for the right one, we're going to use our body. Heel, good boy. He, sit up, good boy. And our, our leg like that, point him in the right direction. Dexter. Now you may need a bit of help here because it's quite thick that other side. He's in the area now, so I'm just using... Right. Good boy. See, it's very thick over there, so we just need a little bit of help to pick it. Good lad, good lad. I, I always err on the side of caution when using too much handling. In that situation when he's in the area, Dexter, sit up. Good boy. I'm inclined to use the hunt whistle. Do, 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 do. Good boy, sit up. Dexter, sit up. To encourage him when he's there to use his own initiative to find it. As soon as he leaves that area, don't be too slow on the stop whistle. Put him back in. But then the hunt whistle. So it's him that's finding it rather than putting him right on the top of it. Because if we were out shooting, and we dropped a bird over there. We'd have a rough idea where it is, but it's thick stuff over there. We need the dog to use his nose. So put him in the area, help him as far as that, and then just a hunt whistle or lost, lost, to encourage him to use his own initiative to find it.